Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, today, as the Minister responsible for Commerce, Business Development, Manufacturing, Properties, and Consumer Affairs, I rise in support of the Invest and Russia Amendment Bill, now on the floor of this August body. Mr. Speaker, it is instructive that we are passing this amendment during business month. And as the member for Castries South just indicated, Mr. Speaker, the overall objective of this amendment is to improve the efficiency of doing business in St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Commerce works closely with Invest St. Lucia and share similar mandates in pursuant of private sector development and growth. Um, Invest St. Lucia has a function to stimulate, facilitate, and promote investment opportunities for foreign or local investors in St. Lucia. While the Ministry of Commerce has the responsibility for creating and sustaining an enabling environment for trade and investment. Mr. Speaker, neither trade nor investment occurs in a vacuum. And it is a prerequisite for us to have a vibrant commercial and industrial ecosystem in which productivity, innovation, and diversity can coexist along with policy, regulations, transparency, and accountability. This fine balance, Mr. Speaker, is what enables businesses and entrepreneurs to carve out a substantial niche market and opportunity. Each entity and each institution, whether it is a micro, medium, large, or whatever trade, whether it's in trade or services, Mr. Speaker, it's important in making St. Lucia a competitive and attractive destination for foreign direct investment and for doing business. Mr. Speaker, I would like to highlight a few activities and initiatives by the Ministry of Commerce and Business Development in particular in support of private sector growth and development and overall enhancement of the business climate in St. Lucia. And this month, the Ministry is observing Business Month through under the theme Sustain Sustaining Trade in the Digital Age, Mr. Speaker. And today, I want to highlight a few things. The Ministry, with the support of the OAS, has provided 50 MSMEs across St. Lucia with point of sale machines and a one year paid service subscription through our partners, Bank of St. Lucia. <laughs> including the vendors. And we had the first launch of this initiative in Sufre about two weeks ago, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have discussed in this house the whole issue of our MSME, and we have about 120 disbursements so far, with over $2 million being disbursed. Mr. Speaker, these initiatives form part of a wider project entitled St. Lucia's Digital Enhancement Program, and there we get support from our friends from the Republic of China, Taiwan. At a recently held St. Lucia-Taiwan Partnership Trade Show, Mr. Speaker, visitors were left in awe of the wide range of technology-based businesses that already exist here in St. Lucia. From free D holograms to robotics, virtual reality, and other emerging technologies. I think it's fair to say, Mr. Speaker, that St. Lucia received a glimpse of what the world has to offer and what our very own St. Lucians can bring to the fore. Mr. Speaker, the path forward for us, therefore, is obvious. In order to remain relevant in this new investment and business age, Digital transformation is absolutely necessary. 
and Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Commerce looks forward to continue working with Invest St. Lucia and our private partners in advancing towards this path, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I felt it was important for us to, for me to outline some of the things that we've done. Because, Mr. Speaker, about three weeks ago, the Honorable Member for Suezel Saltbus, mm. in one of the, what you call, open song halls. Okay. I would consider made a very dishonorable act, Mr. Speaker. Oh, he did? Yeah. And at that time, the Honorable Member was discussing the whole issue of the shortage of rice in St. Lucia. And the Honorable Member made a statement to the effect that there is a shortage of rice either because the Ministry has an incompetent minister Mm. or that the government of St. Lucia does not have the money. Speaker. Now, Mr. Speaker, I am... Member for Suzelle Saltibus. Member for Sufre is standing in a point of order. Speaker, um, on a point of order, the member is misleading the House. The member indicated that at a town hall meeting, she made reference that I um, alluded to the Minister of Commerce being incompetent. I never uttered these words, Mr. Speaker, and I think um, Madam um, from Super Francis Jackson should, should, should. I never uttered these words. One minute, I never uttered the, the, the words. What May I advise somebody else? I never uttered the words that the Minister of Commerce was incompetent. In fact, Mr. Speaker, if, if you would allow me, I could say, I could indicate exactly Please. what, yes. I indicated that during my time as the Minister of Commerce, okay, I received a report monthly indicating, and I gave various areas in which the, 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 the PS would report to me in terms of what was at the warehouse, in terms of the quantity, how, we, how, how much sales we had for a particular period, how, how long we expected the quantity that was left in the warehouse to continue, what shipment was on way, en route, en route to St. Lucia, where the shipment was coming from. This were my words, but I have never referred to the minister, and I think the minister, if she, if she was receiving information secondhand, should know better because of how I have always spoken to her about her in this house in particular. Thank you. A member for Soufre Forces Jack, the, the member for Suzel Saltibus, has indicated he never uttered these words. Mr. Speaker, what's your response? The member implied that either the ministry, the minister is incompetent, or that the government has no money. Or that the government had no monies, no funds. So you stand by your statement? I stand by my statement. And I'm saying, I, I raised it here, um, and, and the, the member, the honorable member is correct in terms of saying that he ought not to, maybe what he should have said is he ought not to imply what he implied. He ought, and he is aware because the honorable member was also a mem the member, a minister in the Ministry of Commerce. The, the member, the member of Suzel has another point of order to raise on. Mr. Speaker, I would like, at, if you would allow, at the next sitting of this House, I could be, provide a recording the, the to tip. indicate that I have never referred the to the Minister as being incompetent. Fair never. enough. Fair and enough. if you would allow that. Fair enough. Proceed, Member thank, for Thank Sufra. you, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, the issue, and, and I'm raising this because I've sat here last week, Tuesday, and today. And what I'm seeing very clearly is an issue of misinformation and disinformation. Now, when we took an oath of office to serve in this honorable house, we took an oath to serve the people of St. Lucia. Now, the people at the Ministry of Commerce, the staff at the Ministry of Commerce, are working under in 
intense pressure knowing that we have to ensure that there is basic commodities of rice, flour, and sugar on this island. And the Honorable Member, as he just informed, being a former minister is aware of the processes. So the statement that you made, and I really want you to bring the entire statement and play it in this Honorable House. Because what you have done is to demoralize the staff at the Ministry of Commerce, especially at the White House Department. The issue of misinformation and disinformation is something that we have to stop doing. This place is too small for it. That's right. It is too small for it. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Speaker, what are some of the things that we're doing? I have raised some of the things that we're doing. But that this particular adjustment before us is important, it is necessary. In collaboration with Invest St. Lucia, the Ministry of Commerce continues to pursue the development of robust policies in support of business process outsourcing. And that's an important area for us, Mr. Speaker. We would call it call centers in our own local palace. This sector has grown very important to the local economy. It requires as well, it provides significant employment for our sector. And I am pleased to report, especially for our youth, that the BDO sector is one that we are working on policies to ensure that we create employment. Mr. Speaker, in collaboration with Invest St. Lucia, the Ministry of Commerce, as well as other stakeholders, are working on creating a business incubator sector. Very well. And that's important for us, Mr. Speaker, especially for our small businesses in support of our MSME agro-processors and manufacturers in the move towards industrialization, formalization, and market penetration. Mr. Speaker, given my ministry's mandate to nurture that entrepreneurial spirit to facilitate private sector growth and development, and ensure there is an enabling environment for trade and investment. And given the fruitful collaboration with Invest in Russia, today I stand here fully supporting this adjustment. Mr. Speaker, only yesterday we had the opportunity to have a church service and to honor some 11 businesses. Businesses that have served for more than, that have more than 50 years in this country at the Lady of Fatima Church in La Clary. And for me, Mr. Speaker, it was a moment when the Ministry of Commerce, the government of St. Lucia, and the business community came together in thanking God and thanking each other for serving St. Lucians. Mr. Speaker, I stand here in full support of this adjustment, and I give a commitment to the business community that we at the Ministry of Commerce and Invest St. Lucia and the government of St. Lucia will do all in our power to improve the business climate in St. Lucia and by extension, grow the economy of St. Lucia. I thank you.